time, guys. This is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ, as you all already know. Um, I don't think I have a long word for you today, so I know in the back of your mind you just said, hey, it's going to be extremely long. I don't think so. Um, I don't have um, a huge list of scriptures to read to you today, uh, and I've said this a million times if I've said it once. My hope is that when we do these messages, these podcasts, that someone um, would be inspired and stirred in the Holy Spirit and would cause you to go search out the word. And I, and I caution you that because Jesus talked about in the last days um, that there would be false messages, false prophets. Uh, I'm not one of those because one of those would not encourage you to go search out the matter in the word of God. They would just tell you to believe me, I am the man of God. They would proclaim what they are. It would all be a I, I, I. You remember Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne. I, I, I. And he was humbled by cast down to the earth. When I say humbled, he's not very humble. I don't mean it that way. He was full of pride. What I mean is he was removed from that position. So a false prophet, a man that's operating by false prophecy, by a spirit uh, of the lying spirit, which is a demonic spirit, is never going to encourage you to search out a matter according to the word of God. And if what I speak is not of the word of God, then dismiss it, throw it away, uh, rebuke it uh, in the name of Jesus and move forward and stop listening to such a person. Amen. But today I want to talk to you about, and I don't even have a title, but the, the anointing uh, versus discipline. And I still don't know that that's the title, but let me read to you in the book of Matthew chapter 11 and in verse 28. The Lord says to me, and this was suppressed upon my heart last week, and I kind of laid it to rest, but it, it, it resurfaced in our Bible study last night. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, and here in verse 30, Matthew 11 and 30, mark that in your mind. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, those of you listening know that a yoke is what they would put around an ox's neck, okay? Um, and some of you may be acting like an ox, but you don't have to. You can be transformed. You can be born again. You can be saved through faith in Yeshua, the Christ alone. But what I want to speak to you is the anointing uh, versus discipline or maybe the anointing versus the yoke. Let me read again. Come to you, all you, you who labor and are heavy laden. Now, we must let the Bible interpret the Bible. The book of Hebrews tells us, again, you search the matter out. It tells us to labor, to enter the rest. But there's different kinds of labor. There's unfruitful labor or labor that abounds to the fruit of the world and the labor that, are fruit, that abounds to the fruit of the kingdom, the kingdom fruit, the manifestation of the kingdom of God. For Jesus told the Pharisees in Luke 17, 21, that the kingdom of God does not come with natural observation, but the kingdom of God is within you. The government, the rule of God in your life. It really, really boils down to what I speak right here is the anointing of God in your life. The, the word is anointed. Let me say that. But then let me say this. The anointing of God, the power of God to walk this out without a heavy yoke being put around your neck, without a burden is just simply to be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you understand this very well. Some of you are good delegators. Some of you understand that your plate gets so heavy that you get stressed out, you get burdened, and, and it's troublesome for you, and there's not much joy in it. You lay awake, you think, you, you stress, um, you fear, all of these things. But if you know that someone else is in charge, even Yeshua the Christ, then it's simple as following him. Yes, there's a discipline. And let me boil discipline down to a word as I see in this lesson. Choice. Choose right or choose left. Choose the narrow path. Choose the wide path. It is a choice to get up and to, to pray and to read the word of God. It is a choice to recollect and call upon the scripture as the Holy Spirit brings to your attention because you've been prayed up and you've been read up. It is a choice to Follow that directive in the circumstances of your life that will come, or you can put a yoke around your neck and you can keep pulling this plow. And the longer you pull, the heavier it gets. And you've heard my analogy before, 225 pounds is not a lot of weight. But if you set that on your neck 
and you walk around with it throughout the day, within a few hours, that's going to feel like it's a mountain and it's going to crush you. We were created by God, to, first of all, in his image. We lost that and took on the, the image of the man of sin, the Adamic nature. Therefore, we were born again. But when we were born again, those things were restored. What was originally intended was restored when you were born again. God made his abode in you. And now he didn't say, carry the mountain on your back. He said, speak to the mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And that mountain would obey you. He said, speak to the mulberry tree, be plucked up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. He said that nothing would be impossible for you because you're a servant and a follower and a believer of the Most High God. The Holy Ghost is in you. And number one, you request nothing that is not the will of God. That was very important what I just ended all of that with. You request nothing that is not the will of God. Because the will of God will not be changed because of your lack of understanding of God's word. <clears throat> now, he will give you revelation. So come to me, all you who labor. Stop laboring. We, we, we work once we're saved, but there's joy in our job. We was at a coach's meeting yesterday. And in that meeting here, and I'm not going to mention names and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they may not want their names mentioned. And the, the, the word, and I don't remember how it was mentioned, and you've heard it before, was that we work. We work very hard as coaches. Coaches put in 80 to 100 hours a week. They work very hard. And he, and he made the reference to it doesn't really seem like work, but the reality of it is, is it is work. Well, you can kind of relate that right here. Yeah, there's a lot of time invested in the things of God. But it doesn't seem like work because your rest is found in the presence of God. Um, I was sharing last night in our Bible study how, when referring to the scripture, that many times we are we, we get as we grow older, as we we walk in our faith longer, things begin to get more difficult than what they were when we were on fire for the Lord. I'm not saying you're not on fire, but just bear with me. We sometimes grow numb and hesitant to things originally that we wow, when this was new to us, we were on fire about it. And it's no different than you, you guys that have a spouse. When you were dating your spouse or seeing your spouse, there was a lot of things in your life that are very important to you before that and now are important again now that the newness has kind of worn off, the honeymoon has kind of disappeared. You might set up late at night visiting when normally you like to be in bed by 10 o'clock. You might be up till midnight visiting because the clock really wasn't important. What was more important to you than sleep was spending time in fellowship with that future spouse. So you remember when you got born again? You remember when you got saved? Do you remember when you hungered and thirsted for righteousness? Do you remember when you desired to see the face of God? And then as time went on, um, the, the flesh began to rise up, the, 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 the enemy counterfeit be, began to try to raise up what God called to be dead. And then you, you begin to start looking at that clock again. And I, I just can't be doing this right now. I got to have my rest. I've got to do this. I got to do that. Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke. For I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You see, the rest, it, it, we need rest in our souls. We, we, we're in a nation today to where anxiety, depression, uh, antidepressants, medications are, are handed out like candy. They, they're, they're popped like crazy. We're the most medicated society in the world. And I'm not even going to talk about pharmacia witchcraft, which comes from the, the word pharmacy. And I'm not saying that everything you're doing is wrong, for we, we have evidence that Hezekiah was healed by a, 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 a cast of figs that was laid upon the ball. Now, I don't know how the ball was going to kill him, but he was going to die before Isaiah prayed for him, and the word of the Lord said, heal him through this medicine. So there is a time and a place for all those things, but our trust and dependency have become totally upon these things when God said, if you put your trust in me, if you'll put my yoke on and take off your yoke, See, my yoke is easy. I said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's like putting on a T-shirt. That T-shirt at the end of the day is not going to feel like that 225-pound barbell. Put on Christ. 
the, the, the book of Ephesians chapter six says, says that to put on the armor of God, the armor of God is heavy in the natural, the armor of a soldier, but the armor of God is, is, has no weight. It removes you from the weighty things of the world. It removes you from carnality and helps you to separate yourself first from yourself, then the world and the spirit of this world. I know some of you did not understand it, but you need to hear what I just said. Take my yoke upon you. You need to understand also that it's quite possible that Yeshua, when he speaks this, that he speaks, it's written in red, Matthew chapter 11, that he, the, the Mosaic law was heavy. But not only that, then here come the religious Pharisees who try to add their laws on top of the Mosaic law, making it impossible. And yes, the Mosaic law by itself was impossible. The purpose of the Mosaic law was to show you that you deserve condemnation. Then the offer, the free gift of grace, the offer of forgiveness, the repentance and trust in Yeshua, the son of God and the work of the cross would remove that, would acquit you, would remove all charges against you, would be canceled, would be blotted out and your name would be grafted into the book of life. But if you continue to try to do your work, I'm going to say some things with you. I don't have time to turn to 10,000 scriptures. Then remember this, that if you're going to try to obey that yoke, you're going to try to obey that law, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be judged by what you obey. And I don't know anybody here who's never told a lie. I don't know anybody here who's never stolen anything. You know the old story. Teachers go to the copy room, make copies all the time for personal use. Theft goes much deeper than robbing a bank. You see, the Americanized laws and rules that are good don't scratch the surface of the depth of God's laws. So no one will be, felt, will be found uh, guiltless before the throne of God lest you're wearing the yoke of Christ and walking after Christ. My yoke, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Follow me. He never said, repeat after me. He said, follow me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, when you choose to put your faith exclusively in Christ and what he did at the cross, and I do believe according to Luke chapter 11, should be able to easy to remember today. You've got Matthew 11 and Luke 11. I do believe that that seeking, knocking, finding is talking about the Holy Spirit which Jesus promised that he would, if he did not go to the Father, that he could not send us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is the spirit that lives in the man who's repentant, walking in trust totally in the faith of Christ. And that same faith that it took to save you in Christ and him crucified, the same faith is going to be required day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment to keep from putting that other yoke on, that yoke of the world, that yoke of self, that yoke that is too heavy to bear. As I said, have you ever been in a limousine ride? <clears throat> in a limousine, you get in the back, you don't really worry about the driver. You probably didn't check out his credentials. <clears throat> Might be dangerous in today's society, but you don't worry about it. When you ride on an airplane, you don't check out the credentials of the pilot. How much more when you begin to follow the spirit of truth and the spirit of life? Why is that yoke around your neck? Let me tell you why. In James Chapter four, it says we're to wars and all of these things and lust and strife and all these things come from, I added some commentary there. Do, do they not come because it's in your flesh, because your flesh ain't dead yet, because you, you're trying to carry this yoke that God called you to put down and pick up his? Have you, have you not learned yet from the word of God these simple truths? I said this lesson wasn't going to be long, and I'm going to shut my Bible right here in front of me to prove that. And let me just speak to you from the heart real fast. I'm going to say it again. There's a difference in the anointing and discipline. Discipline is required to bring our body into subjection. The Apostle Paul talked about that. However, you will never, ever be able to stay in that disciplined state. You will fall off the wagon lest the yoke of Christ is upon you. 
for his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. When you try to carry it of your own accord, you will reach a point to where your soul, your mind, which is called stress, anxiety, fear, and your body will collapse under the pressure that you were never meant to carry. You were meant to follow Yeshua the Christ. You were meant to be born again and saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, that you would be led into all truth and righteousness. You were meant to get up and pray and seek the face of God. And when you can no longer lay there and you have to go to work because you need to go to work because a man that won't work should not eat. But the work that I speak of is a different kind of work. It is the work of the labor of entering the rest of God that he promised you in Matthew chapter 11. To be led of the spirit, to let it go. I don't care what it is, let it go. Coach, let it go. Well, we need to win. I got to work harder. You better let it go. Well, we need to do this. I got to work harder. You better let it go. The only thing that you need to do is follow Yeshua the Christ and put on the armor of God. Put your faith in him and do what he says. And if the other things don't work out, then it means you were focused on the wrong thing. You remember when I said, speak of the mountain? Remember when I said that, speak, what is the will of God? This is what I'm talking about in your life every day. What is the will of God? Is the will of God for you to work 100 hours a week and reevaluate, reinvent the wheel over and over and over and over and over? No, it's not. That is your fear of failure. Well, a man of God is not afraid of failure because he's not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. You enjoy this, coaches. Enjoy this season. And you stand. And you follow Jesus. And I know there's going to be hours at the field house and on the field. But you use those hours productively to glorify God and let those boys and girls see God in you working through you and not just see it because the Bible doesn't say just let them see it. It says speak it out of your mouth. Speak the word of God that someone's life will be changed. Speak it as a seed broadcaster, broadcasting seed in a yard that that seed would be planted and stick in the heart of men. And that just as that, if you've seen that, that picture on the internet, of a rock with a tree growing out of it. That's what'll happen. It'll split the rock and they'll be given a new heart, a heart of flesh with the word of God. And they'll be rooted and grounded like a tree by living rivers of living water. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. The Mosaic law brought you to condemnation that you may see the goodness of God. Put your trust in Yeshua, be acquitted and forgiven. Don't try to put that yoke back on. Yes, bring your body into subjection. Get your butt out of bed, get to praying, and get to reading the word of God. But don't put it in subjection to the things of the world, the things of the flesh, the things that are perishing, the things that God just simply will not bless. Many people have brought disaster upon their lives, stress, worry, fear, because they've refused to totally trust God. Let me end again. I've ended once, let's end again. As you built that relationship and as the things in your life when you were building that relationship with your spouse were not important, that are important today because the most important thing was sitting right before you. The most important person was right before you. Keep this mind. Keep this mind in Christ to keep you free from the burden and the yokes of the world. I pray that this makes sense. I pray that you're encouraged. God bless you, praying for you all. Uh, Monday morning, uh, football starts. And look, football's only the vehicle. It is not your calling. It is the vehicle God has provided for you to be a man of God and to sow the seed of the word of God. Leave the results up to God. One man plants, one man waters, but it's God who brings the increase. Now you're released from the bondage of saving anybody. Preach the gospel. The word is already able to do what the word is able to do. For the word is a person, Yeshua the Christ. Do your job. Honor Christ. Put on his yoke. Take off the yoke of the world. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you guys. And we'll speak to you again next week, the Lord willing, in Jesus' name.